Nicole. What about crochet mouse ears with chunky yarn? YouTube channel. I am Nicole of Woven Tales Designs. If you saw my previous video, you saw I gave a tutorial on how to create your very own mouse ears, but crochet style and with worsted weight yarn. But I'm sorry, um, I don't know about you, but my stash has all kinds of weights of yarn, including chunky weight yarn. If you already have my pattern, you actually have received both the chunky weight and the worsted weight edition of the pattern, so yay you. Let's see how we work up this chunky weight version of the Ever After Mouse Ears. It's gonna be really fun. I hope you're ready for it. Let's dive. Hello Magical Makers, let's go ahead and talk about our materials and tools that we'll need to create our Ever After Mouse ears. Starting with, of course, our main color yarn. Today for this tutorial, I'm going to use I Love This Chunky from Hobby Lobby. This is very, very soft, just like the label says. And this is the colorway Red Velvet. I was feeling very festive when I went shopping. And um, always check your yarn label to make sure that this is a true category five weight yarn. The label, it will be your starting point. Um, and this is definitely a perfect five. Then we have for our complementary color yarn, we have Cotton Double XL New Spin by Yarn Bee in the colorway Bath Bomb. Now, I will say this is a cotton-based yarn. I would advise against using that type of yarn for this project, but because it's my complementary color, it's not as bad. You are going to need something to stuff your ears with. So I have here some standard polyfill. You really only need a handful for each ear, so don't go ahead and buy a 10 pound box. <laughs> then you're gonna need a scrap fabric for the ends of our ears to use to cover them with. And I got this from Amazon. It's a faux leather fabric swatch, um, pretty simple. Um, it's not too thick either, which is perfect. You'll definitely need something for all of this to attach to. So I have here a one inch wide headband. Um, the color of the headband doesn't matter. You just need to make sure that it is not covered because that'll be one less step for you for later. Then we'll need a stabilizing type of material for the inside of the ears. This is a five millimeter thick cosplay grade high density craft foam. Um, you can use regular craft foam if you'd like, but just make sure it's still that same four to six millimeter thickness. You're gonna need something to cut and score with. So I have here a sharp pair of standard craft scissors. You will of course need a crochet hook. So for this project, we are going to use with the chunky yarn, a size six millimeter hook or a size J10. You're going to need a tapestry needle. And just so you know, this project does need you to weave in your ends as you go. I'm telling you ahead of time, so you have mental time to prepare. Um, a curved one is really standard for a type of project like this because it's sort of like a makeroomy. You're going to need a stitch marker for crocheting in the round continuously. This is a really cute one from a set I got from Taylor Lane Crochet Co. And that is linked down below in the description. We will definitely need a measuring tape for this project because symmetry is so important for our ear placement on the headband. And last but not least, you are going to need a reliable glue gun. If we're looking for a recommendation, the Gorilla Glue Gun brand is really awesome. I just got the mini size, so it's not super expensive. You can check out that also in the link below. And then without a further ado, let's get started with chapter one of this project. We'll need our yarn, our hook, tapestry needle, stitch marker, and scissors. Let's get started. For round one of our first ear that we are going to start with, we're going to begin with a magic ring. So go ahead and grab your main color yarn and start that magic ring however you like to start yours. And then with that started, go ahead and work a chain one to begin the round. Then into that magic ring, we are going to work seven single crochet stitches. And that is a little bit different from most Amigurumi projects, which have you start with a single crochet six for the beginning round. This project, we're going to start with seven. For round two, we are going to go ahead and have our stitch marker ready. We are going to work 
a single crochet increase into every single stitch around, but for that first stitch, we are going to work it continuously. So go ahead and add your stitch marker to the top of that. So we have our spot. And then just like I said, um, work a single crochet again into that same place of the first stitch from the previous round and work an increased stitch into each stitch around from then. And at the end of round two, you should have a total of 14 stitches. Right, and then here we have the beginning of round three. Take that stitch marker out just to get started. We are going to single crochet into the first stitch. Go ahead and replace that stitch marker into that new stitch. And then work an increase into the next stitch. And then that will be our repeat all the way around work single crochet and then increase into the next stitch single crochet and then increase and then at the end of round three you should have a total of 21 stitches for round four like we did at the beginning of the last round single crochet into that first stitch replace that stitch marker into the new first stitch of the round and then you're going to work single crochet into the next stitch and then increase into the next stitch and that will be our repeat all the way around until we reach a total of 28 stitches so that's single crochet two and then single crochet increase and like I said you should have a total of 28 stitches at the end of this round if you're working the kid size for the chunky ear pattern, you are going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch at the end of this round. Um, there we have it. We've reached our end here magically. So yes, if you've worked the kid size, you are going to join with a slip stitch and then pull up a long loop and set this aside. Um, we'll use this kind of as a template in a little bit. But if you are not working at the child size and you're working the adult size, you will not need to set this aside. So we have one more round of increases for the adult size of the chunky ears. Go ahead and into that first stitch, work a single crochet. Replace the stitch marker. Then work a single crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch and then an increase into the next stitch and that will be your repeat for this round which will be single crochet three and then single crochet increase all the way around until you have a total of 35 stitches for round five for the adult size and just to uh, kind of let you know the little sounds you hear in the background that are like blah that's my son. He is under a year old and very expressive, so um, just enjoy his little outbursts. I know I do, but it's really hard to record a voiceover without him making sounds. All right, then at the end of round five for the adult size, you will again join to the first stitch made with a slip stitch. You should have a total of 35 stitches for that round. Go ahead and pull up a long loop and Kind of set your crochet hook and stitch marker to the side. I go ahead and tighten that magic ring tail from the very beginning of round one and knot it and then I kind of just snip off any excess from that length so it's not in our way for this next step. So this next step we are going to use our actual crochet piece to make the perfect template for our ear inserts that will stabilize the inside of the ear. So grab that craft foam that we saw earlier in the materials and you are going to set your crocheted circle um, rounds one through four or round through five right on top of that, just like that. Kind of line it up at the edges so you're not gonna waste any material. And then we're going to grab our scissors and with the edge of our scissors, we are going to trace the outside edge of our circle 
onto that foam, pressing firmly into the foam. We're literally using the edge of our scissors to score into the foam and leave an impression. And this will create a cutting guide for us to cut out an initial shape for our ear insert. So you can kind of see here, it's, it's black, so I know it's a little tough to see, but this has kind of left an imprint there. So that's gonna be what we use to make a, um, to cut out a circle. So go ahead and cut off just the end piece that you'll need, it will be easier, I promise. And then cut on that line to get that initial rough circle shape out. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle in the first cut, so you can see me here kind of trimming and uh, chopping off any pieces that I don't need. Get it as close to a perfect circle as you can get it, and then grab your headband. Um, this took me forever to figure out, um, but uh, go ahead and set that on top of your circle, overlapping just about three quarters of an inch to an inch in overlap and then I usually just press it into my headband but if you don't have a sharp edge on your headband reset that there and um, go ahead and use the scissors to just score um, that line that you need and you're going to press um, against the inside of that headband. I used to just eyeball this but then I realized why not just use the headband as my template for this curved edge and you're gonna see me cut that little line off or that little piece off. And we have here a really nice inside template uh, for our ears. And now that we have that cut out, rather than tracing our crocheted circle again, we're going to use that to batch another ear insert. You only need two for one set of ears, but if you actually batch multiple ears for this project, um, you can go ahead and, as long as you're using the same yarn for multiple ears, because every yarn works up differently, um, you can go ahead and batch as many of these as you need. Hint for market prep. And then once we have two of our ear inserts finished, go ahead and stuff those off to the side and then we will finish off the last round of our crocheted ear base. For round five of the child size or six of the adult size, we are going to start with a chain two and then half double crochet into the same stitch as joining. Then from here, you're going to work a half double crochet into the next 22 or 28 stitches around, 22 for the child size or 28 for the adult size. And then you will finish by working a half double crochet into the 24th or 30th stitch from the previous round and then chain two slip stitch into that same 24th or 30th stitch. And this is kind of where I feel a little weird as a designer. This is technically a row since we're not going all the way around, but we're, because we're still going around, I consider it to be around. Um, and at the end of this, you should have four or five unworked stitches from the previous round. And that is on purpose. It creates a little shaping for us. Go ahead from this point and fasten off your work. And then, like I said, I do this for all my projects. I weave my ends in as I go. So take your tapestry needle and thread that nice tail and work that and weave that into the wrong side of your piece. And then once you've made and finished this first ear, um, you are going to work three more of these identical pieces and those will create uh, our bases for the ears. And just like magic, we now have four identical ear bases. You will use two for each ear side, and we will only need to work with two of these um, to begin the next part of this pattern. So go ahead and set two of those aside. With our complementary color yarn, we will now work the ear strip, which is a very long rectangular piece that will connect those two ear bases together. 
So with our complementary color yarn, we're going to start with a slip knot that has a six inch long tail, and that tail will be used later for sewing. So don't forget to make that at least six inches. And to begin row one, we will work a foundation chain of chain three. And then to begin row one, we will be working into the back bumps of our foundation chain here. And if you don't know what those are, really quick, those are just the spiny parts, the bumps of the back of the chain. And you'll see why we use that later. So skipping that first chain from the hook, we're going to work a single crochet into the next chain, into that back bump. And then find the last chain's back bump and work a single crochet into that. So that is just two stitches across for row one. To finish that off, you're going to chain one and turn your work. And there we have it. So when we work into those back bumps, you kind of see, um, it's a little fuzzy here because my camera won't focus, but we have here what looks like to be the tops of stitches. Since we worked into the back bumps, we have an identical top and bottom of our little piece here. And that will come in handy later for seaming. For row two, it is very simple. You're just going to single crochet across, chain one and turn, and you will still have a total of two stitches for that row. That will be our single row repeat until we have a total of 28 or 35 rows total for the ear strip. So that's 28 rows if you're working the child size or 35 rows for the adult size. Once you've reached the end of this, I will see you in a little bit for our first part of our seaming of the ear pieces. Alrighty, and here we go. Just like magic, we have a completed ear strip. This is should be pretty long, so um, just make sure that you double check and double count that you have exactly the amount of rows you need. To create our seam work for the next step here, we're going to be working in, set, in phases here. So uh, for phase one, we worked on the left side of our ear strip and we're working into the raw edges. So you see me kind of kind of pointing to those spaces that I'm going to be using. My first raw edge space will be into that same place that we used our last stitch made in the last row of the ear strip. Go ahead and get that first ear base you'll be using and set that aside. And I'm gonna work the very first seaming stitch very slow so you can see the process. You're always working into the raw edge first. So go ahead and insert your hook into that first raw edge. Kind of drop your yarn so that's out of the way so you can kind of get your ear base ready. Have the right side of it facing you and kind of just uh, notice where all of those third loops from the last round are. Those are going to be the horizontal bars on the back side of the half double crochet stitches. And make sure you're not working into the chain two sequence from the very first chain two here. Identify that first horizontal bar on the back of that first half double crochet stitch. Insert your hook into that and then pick that yarn back up and go ahead and yarn over your hook and pull the yarn slowly and carefully through the third loop and the raw edge. Having two loops on your hook, just continue and pull that through that loop on your, the first loop on your hook. And that's one seaming stitch. So repeat that, insert your hook to the next raw edge, insert your hook into the next third loop available, yarn over, and pull through both the third loop and raw edge, and then lastly, the loop on your hook. Perfect, there we go. You can see me do it again here. Insert my hook into the raw edge first, the third loop second. Next step is to yarn over and pull through both those places and then pull through the loop on your hook. And that is one seaming stitch. So essentially you're working a slip stitch through both pieces here. And this is going to create these nice little dotted lines on the back of your ear base and you'll see the top of that slip stitch on the, uh, the, on the ear strip here. I'm going to continue to work these all the way around until I have no third loops left to work into. 
be careful that you aren't working into the last chain two of the ear base because that will kind of look a little bit like a horizontal bar of a half double crochet stitch, but it's not. And you can double check this by counting those slip stitches on the front side of your work or those dotted lines of the back of the slip stitches on the ear base for your counting. And I'm just gonna show you really quick what I'm talking about with this last half double crochet. It's easy to miss. So we, here we have that last stitch and then we have the chain two from round five or six. Locate the last horizontal bar or the third loop from that half double crochet and just make sure you know where that's at before you get there because it's easy to work into the chain two and forget. So here we have all the seaming stitches finished. They look pretty good. They should look very similar to this. And no matter what yarn you use, uh, you should always see these dotted lines on the back side of the ear base representing the backs of those slip stitches. And then we are going to see that we have 24 or 30 of those. Now we are going to go ahead and work phase two of this piece, and which is really just working across the remainder of the raw edges of the end of our ear strip. So go ahead and work into the next three or four raw edges, a slip stitch, and then the last raw edge, we will be working just a little bit differently. We're going to create a corner with our crochet. So that last raw edge that you see here is actually the unworked loops of the foundation chain. So go ahead and work a slip stitch into that last raw edge. You're going to chain one. and then you're going to work a slip stitch into that same last raw edge on the left side of your work. And there we have our corner. So then we're going to work into the next raw edge, which is the last raw edge of the right side of our work. We're going to work a slip stitch, a chain one, and a slip stitch into that next raw edge. And that is our other corner. And then, just like we did on the other side, we are going to work a slip stitch across the next three or four raw edges. Three for the child size, four for the adult size. All right, perfect. And double count that you're doing the right amount there. I always stop one short, personally. All right, moving into phase three, insert your hook into the next available raw edge. Let your yarn fall forward out of your way. Pick up that second ear base with the right side of it facing you. You're going to locate the first half double crochet from round five or six, not the chain two. Kind of push that a little bit forward so you have access to that third loop from the half double crochet and insert your hook into that third loop. Then you're going to pick that yarn up and then yarn over and pull through the third loop and raw edge and finally the loop on your hook. And then continue to make seaming stitches all the way around until you have worked into every single third loop of the half double crochet stitches from round five or six. This is the same exact thing as we did in phase one, except we are now using the second ear base and we're working now back up the other side of the ear strip, which is the right side of the ear strip. And once you have reached the end, you don't have any more raw edges left. You don't have any more half double crochets to work into. You're going to fasten off and just fasten off with a normal length of tail because all you'll be doing is weaving this tail in Make sure you do not weave in the beginning six inch tail from the very first part of our work here. And just with, now that you have the wrong side facing you, just weave that in before turning it inside out. I promise you will save yourself some agony later when you get into the next bit. Thank you. 
Okay, and then here we have it all woven in. This is ready to go. I just wanna bring your attention to actually um, on the middle line of that ear strip, we now have kind of like a ridge. This will come into handy later as kind of like a guide for our ear insert that we cut out earlier. Um, I'm going to flip this inside out and just examine to make sure I didn't split any of my yarn while I did these seaming stitches and it looks pretty good to me. It kind of, if it looks like a cookie, you did it right. <laughs> Go ahead and make a second one just like that and we are going to move on to stuffing and stabilizing our ears. So um, now grab those ear inserts that we cut out from earlier and we are going to simply stick those on the very inside of our work and finding that ridge from the seaming stitches as our guide to where to place it we are going to just nestle that super cozy on the inside if you do this right you should not have any of this sticking out um, if you need to pull it back out and trim it now is the time and not later and then do the same thing to the other ear just slip that on inside Test out the fit, make sure it agrees with you. This is where you'll really notice if you trimmed the edges of those ear inserts correctly because if your piece looks kind of blocky and not circular, that means you might need to just kind of like round the edges a little bit better. Now we're going to stuff it and add some dimension with our polyfill stuffing. So pick little bits of it off at a time. Um, this is a trick I learned in Amigurumi tutorials. Less is more and kind of just add the stuffing on either side of the ear insert, one ear at a time as you go. And um, you know, honestly, you do a lot with attaching these to the headbands. So I wouldn't overstuff these, but that's totally, the stuffing level is up to you, very subjective. I like a medium stuffing level, if that makes sense. <laughs> I don't like super bulky, but I do like them to have dimension. I would love to see those half double crochet stitches used to kind of pop all the rest of that ear base forward, giving us a really pretty stuffed plushy look. Once you're confident with that first one, go ahead and stuff the second ear just the same. And then when that's finished, go ahead and pick these up and compare them side by side because we are going to make sure that they are symmetrical. Unless you want them to be asymmetrical, that's totally up to you, but I, symmetry is my favorite thing for this project. So once those are stuffed to your liking, go ahead and set them off to the side. And now we are going to begin chapter two of this pattern which is our bow with our complementary color yarn we are going to create a slip knot and then with that slip knot we are going to work a foundation chain of chain 24 for chain 30 for our bow And once you have 24 or 30 chains worked up here, we are going to uh, begin round one um, by working into the back bumps of the foundation chain, just like we did in the ear strip. So those are those spiny bits. Careful to not twist your work um, before we begin crocheting our stitches. We're just going to join to that first chain made and working into that back bump when we join as well. And then right away, we will not be chaining up to begin any round for the bow, and that will come in handy later. I'll show you why. But for now, just right away, half double crochet into that same stitch as joining. And then you're going to work a half double crochet into the next nine or 12 chains, making sure that you work into the back bumps of each 
next chain. Once you've worked up those half double crochets, you're going to chain two and skip the next two chains. And then you're going to carry on with working half double crochet into the next 10 or 13 chains, working into the back bumps. Chain two, skip two, and then join to the first stitch made of round one. And that will complete round one. You should have a total of 20 or 26 stitches and then two chain two sequences. All right, for round two through five, we're working a single round repeat, and all of these stitches will be worked into the front loops only of those half double crochet stitches from the previous round. So make sure that you take your time with this if you've never worked front loop only. Go ahead and no chain one to begin our work. We're gonna immediately yarn over and insert our hook into that front loop only, and then complete our half double crochet as normal. There we go. You're working front loop only half double crochet into 10 or 13 stitches. And then you're going to chain two, skip the chain two sequence from the previous round, and then repeat that all the way around once more. So that is front loop only half double crochet, 10 or 13. And then chain two, skip two. At the end of that second repeat there, you are going to join to the first stitch made. And then you are going to repeat round two until you have a total of five rounds total. Five rounds total. And once you have reached the end of round five here, you are going to go ahead and pull up a very, very long loop because we're going to fasten off with a long tail for this. Uh, this long tail is going to be used as the center wrap for our bow and forming the bow. So go ahead and fasten off with at least a 60 to 65 inch long tail for the child size or a 70 to 75 inch long tail for the adult size. And before we do anything else to form a bow, we need to weave in this end. Again, I know this is probably agonizing for those that like to save this for later, but this is important for weaving in because we won't want this in the way when we go to form the bow in just a second here. All right, and once that is woven in, you now have a nice little base here for a bow. Locate 
all of the chain two skip two sequences and you're going to line those up so they are in the center of our piece here and then from there we're using those to have a kind of a really easy pinch point here so gather all of those together and kind of pinch them down with one hand here grab your other hand and get that tail and we are going to make wraps now around those chain two skip two sequences this is totally subjective however many you want to wrap um, but i do usually a total of about 20 wraps for the kid size and then i do 25 wraps for the adult size and then again this adjusts depending on what kind of yarn i use some yarns work up thicker some yarns work up thinner depending on um, their makeup like this is a cotton based yarn so i actually never got to 25. <laughs> i think i only got to 20 for the adult size but that's totally fine i still got the thickness that i liked once you're finished wrapping and you figure out you have enough of a thickness in the middle leave your last wrap in the back of your work and then flip your work over. We are now going to secure this with a knot in the back of our work. So to do this, we're going to insert our hook underneath those tightly made wraps. Take your time. <laughs> this can get a little cumbersome here. Careful not to also grab at any of those stitches that we just made, because that will kind of ruin it. Um, yarn over and pull that underneath all of the loops or the wraps, excuse me. And then once you have that, Go ahead and yarn over and pull through a couple times to create a little fastened off knot here. Pull that down and tight to secure it. And then you're going to weave the remainder length of that tail into the inside of your bow. I really didn't leave myself a lot of um, tail left here, so don't do like me. <laughs> Give yourself something to use to weave in. And again, you will need this woven in because um, what we do with the bow afterwards is we glue it on. So you don't want that tail in the way. And then once that is all woven in, that was a bad job on my part, flip it over and just kind of like pull and uh, fluff your bow out just so it now has that shape. If you need to kind of adjust where those chain twos are, chain two skip twos are, sometimes they like to uh, twist around when you're wrapping. And there we have it, a beautifully made bow. And you can totally, if you don't even wanna make mouse ears, use this bow pattern for like uh, little hair clips or whatnot, it's a really fun pattern. And once you have it fluffed out to your desire, set that aside. And we are going to move on to the last chapter of this project, the assembly. Go ahead and heat up that glue gun and have that set aside for later. Um, we are going to have that set at a low setting, so we're not welding here. Don't worry about having that super, super hot for this project. And grab your one inch wide headband. We are going to measure on the outside of it to know where to place our ears. So grab your measuring tape, set your bow aside. We won't need that just to begin here. And uh, we'll work one ear at a time. Okay, now that we have our pieces we need, we are going to go ahead and take our measuring tape, line the beginning end of it up with the tip of our headband here. And working that along the side of our headband, we are going to find the six and a half inch point of our headband and use your thumb as a kind of like a placement marker here, not in the middle. You don't want to glue it onto the headband and now work a line of glue from that six and a half inch mark moving towards the tip of the headband. I kind of do about a two inch long glue line. Grab your first ear that you want to place down on the headband and line up the hinge where phase two begins on the ear and put that on the six and a half inch mark and then lay the length of our ear strip onto the line of glue and press and hold just like that. And when you press, just be careful. If you are working with yarn that creates more holes in your crocheted piece, this is where the glue will seep through. Again, less is more with the glue. Um, you really don't need a lot. Um, if it comes up later, you can totally reattach, but there we have it. And then go ahead and kind of look at it make sure that this is to your liking with spacing so far. Um, it is possible with the chunky to rip off the ear and start again. So you're going to see me repeat this process with the other ear. I measure six and a half inches from the tip to the center of the headband. Keep my thumb as a place marker and then I add a line of glue from that six and a half inch mark moving towards the tip of the headband about two inches long and then I grab the other ear base here and I line up the phase two area or the hinge 
point with the six and a half inch point. And then with confidence, <laughs> I lay that right down onto the line of blue and I press and I hold. Now, I will take this time to let you know, chunky yarn tends to work up very heavy. So this will kind of pull out your glue if it's not hardened yet. So just hold it down for longer than you think you should and then it won't come up. <laughs> If you want a little bit of help on how to space these, if you want more spacing or less, check out my customization guide. I have that link below in the description box. We are now going to go ahead and just kind of get those little tails out of the way here. So you're seeing me tie it to the headband here. You could just tape them as well if you want, but I just don't like to have too many crafting tools out. And now we're going to begin working yarn wraps around our headband and our ear strips. So grab your main color yarn. You can also use a different color yarn for this part if you choose. And I'm going to struggle with pulling this out of the skein. Ugh, my favorite thing is when it's just being stubborn and won't let me have the yarn. You're really gonna see me struggle with this and fight it, oh my gosh. Oh, the joys of yarn art, aren't they fun? Uh, okay, great. So once you have a considerable length pulled and at your ready here, you're going to take your glue and add a line of glue on the inside center line of the headband, about half an inch away from the tip of the headband. And then laying the tail of the yarn right over top of that. So the tail is kind of towards or pointing towards the center line of the headband. You're going to make a couple of wraps just to get started. Don't pull too tight, it will shift. And then you're going to make incremental yarn wraps around the headband, just like that, moving all the way over that tail that we have. And you're going to work like this all the way around the headband, um, but once I cover the tail, I kind of actually, you'll see me flip this over so that I have the, um, there we go. Yeah, I'm flipping it over here just so I can re-grip and make it easier on myself. And then continue to make some yarn wraps moving towards that first ear strip. Work incrementally. Every now and then um, you can actually stop what you're doing with the yarn wraps and kind of slide them back towards the tip just so they kind of tighten up and you have a lot uh, more wraps per inch, I guess wraps per inch that's totally a yarn lovers term for sure <laughs> and uh, continue to make yarn wraps work as slowly as you want with this because you really want to make sure this is our only yarn wraps layer which is very different from the worsted weight version of this pattern so you really want to take your time with this because you don't want to have any plastic peeking out that's going to be not a good look for the ears once we have about, I would say, three quarters of an inch to an inch left of space on this headband here before the ear strip, I add another anchor point of glue just to kind of secure that down because we won't be adding any glue on top of the ear strip. Go ahead and make those last bits of wraps. Again, work incrementally. Um, when you're working over a line of glue, you're gonna see that it's gonna wanna seep out. So I kind of push the glue along as I make my wraps. And then I make extra, extra wraps kind of past the point of the ear strip but not over top of the ear strip and that is going to come in handy when we transition over top of the ear strip here perfect okay so now take that tail and get it out of your way and just kind of lightly tie it around uh, the headband Ugh, i don't think i got these tails long enough this should be easier if you have a true six inch long tail i did not i sucked at that part uh so now we are going to work over this ear strip here making yarn wraps take your time with this um, it's gonna even though it looks like my ear strip is totally spilling over the edges these yarn wraps will kind of squish them back into the sides of the headband and make them flush so don't worry about if they're sticking out over the ends because the yarn you're using is extra thick or extra squishy um, this is totally rectified here and you're really not going to see it anyway when we go to glue down the sides of the ears so like I said, make really tight incremental wraps. We're moving towards the hinge point of the ear. Um, oh God, look at me, look at that arm shake. Oh my gosh, I am really struggling with my main color yarn today, guys. Super cute, super cute, I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally pull out that yarn ahead of time so you're not uh, losing your place here. And make those yarn wraps as slowly or as quickly as you'd like. 
Um, and take this time as you're watching along and making along with me. Go ahead and leave a comment in the t in uh, in the comments down below. Let me know what yarn you would want to work with for this project. Would you like to use the same yarn I did? Do you have yarn in mind? Do you have characters in mind that you want to kind of make your ears inspired off of? Disney bounding is such an awesome thing, and I have totally made a bunch of ears in the Disney bounding style. So I have my testers for this project. Shout out to all my testers. You guys are amazing. Um, they really pulled through and did a great job with their ears and their color choices were so cool. All right, and you're gonna see me kind of over wrap um, at the hinge point here and that's on purpose just so that we have a smooth transition on the other side of the ear strip here. So I kind of squish it in a little bit, make sure it looks pretty good. I let that fall over top. And then now I am going to continue to make yarn wraps on the other side of our ear here, moving towards the center point of the headbands. And this is where I add my next line of glue as an anchor point. It doesn't need to be a long line of glue. I'd probably just say like maybe like half an inch to three quarters of an inch if you really wanna get exact. And then continue to make yarn wraps over this. Um, and you can kind of see how the glue gets pushed forward as I'm making my yarn wraps. I kind of quickly wrap and then as I get to the glue, I slow down and make sure that that glue is not seeping out. This is really, really, it's really easy with the chunky yarn here to have glue seeping out all over the place. So just, you know, use, use your discretion. Um, this does take a little bit of practice. This is probably like the 40th pair I've made. So I promise you, I will struggle with, uh, look at that. I struggled right here. I did not hold that glue down long enough. So I'm gonna fix that um, right here actually before we get to the next set of ear wraps. Um, and it's so easy to do it. I'm just adding an extra zigzag line of glue so it really stays down. And I am just gonna repress that ear down onto the headband. All right, now that that is fixed, <laughs> thanks for struggling with me there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add another line of glue, a short one, um, just before this second ear here to kind of anchor our yarn wraps before we get to the next ear strip. And then just make yarn wraps just like we have. Struggle with your yarn just like I am. Look at that arm shake, oh my goodness. <laughs> and uh, work towards that second ear and uh, if at any point you need to change your grip or change how you wrap it, that is totally fine. I kind of do um, kind of this over method here. Some people like to go, you know, the other way. That's totally subjective. And there is no wrong way to do this. If you find a better way to cover your headband, feel free to work that out. Um, and then go ahead and let that second ear fall back and open so that you have access to the ear strip. And you're just going to do exactly the same thing, just in the reverse uh, steps uh, with the second ear, wrapping that ear strip and then working down the other side of the headband. No glue should be going on the ear strip. You can if you want, but I just find that it really doesn't uh, doesn't need it. Um, and I didn't mention this with the first ear. You're not covering the last like quarter of an inch length of any of the ear strips. And this is so we have something to sew into later. You'll see that in the next step. Um, so just skip over that. That's why we kind of make extra wraps before we get to um, the headband there. And then continue to work all the way down, adding glue as needed. If you wanna add glue more than I do, totally fine. I just like to conserve my materials as much as possible, so that's why I only add a few anchor points of glue as I go. And now that we've reached the end here, I'm just going to snip off that tail here, or the working yarn. And we are now going to go ahead and set our glue aside for just a second, untie those tails that we had from earlier, and go ahead and grab your tapestry needle. We are going to now connect the ends of our ear strips together. So kind of insert your tail into that tapestry needle working one ear at a time. All we're going to do here is we're going to just sew together these ends. There is no wrong or right way to do this. 
I found that it literally looks the same no matter what method you use here. Uh, but I do definitely use the unworked loops of the foundation chain of the ear strip as well as the tops of the stitches of the last row of my ear strip and kind of match those up in that way. Um, but again, you can literally do this however you want. It really doesn't matter. This part isn't the hero of the work, but it is important that it's secure. So do more sewing stitches as you think necessary. And then once you are finished kind of connecting them with your sewing stitches, go ahead and hide that tail onto the inside of your ear. Um, weave it in a couple times um, and then just hide it on the inside. This is where that curved tapestry needle end does come in handy. Awesome, so we have one side sewed down there. Go ahead and do the same thing to the other ear. Make sure both of those are nice and secure. And now that we are done that part, we are going to glue down the sides of our, kind of those edges of the unworked loops there. So add a line of glue directly on the side of the ear strip that's just been wrapped. So it should be about two inches long, two and a half inches long. And then take the chain twos as something to hold on to from the sides of the ear bases and go ahead and pull and press down the unworked stitches from earlier and the edge of our ear base down onto the headband. Press and hold for at least 20 seconds so that glue kind of has a chance to cool and harden. And then don't worry about the corner chain twos there. We are going to just kind of clean those up later, but just make sure that the sides are completely and firmly pressed down and flush with the edge of our headband. And this is gonna be especially important if you use a different type of yarn for the wraps on the headband. Um, the change in color will definitely kind of make things look a little less imperfect. So just take your time with this part. Once again, um, go ahead and add a line of glue right there on top of the ear strip that's just been wrapped. Going a little bit over the yarn wraps, a little bit before and past. And then take the chain twos to use as a pulling down part and kind of press and hold that right onto the headband, just like that, flush and in line with the side of the headband. You're gonna do that same thing for the other set of ears there. And I always press down and forward away from me. All right, so now we're going to tack on the chain two spots. So take your glue gun and just add a dot of glue behind our chain twos from the air bases. And then take this moment to pull, carefully pull those down and tack them down onto those dots of glue. You will definitely need to do less is more again for this part. This whole project is less is more. <laughs> this is where I tend to burn my fingers because I either get lazy about watching my glue amount or I just am in a rush because I'm so excited to see the end result of my ears. So take your time with this. Less is more, literally a tiny little baby size of glue for each part. Hold that down for at least 20 seconds just so it glue it kind of like hardens and cools down and then do the same thing for the other side of that ear just adding a little dot of glue right there and right there and then i am going ahead and taking each side with each hand here and just pressing those chain twos down you don't have to do this if you've already done a great job with um gluing down your um your whole edge uh, but sometimes different yarns, the chain two just works up differently and sometimes it's bulkier, sometimes it's not. So this one, I definitely needed to tack down these edges. Do this as needed. It's not super, super like 
I don't know. It's, it's, it depends on the yarn you're using. Let me just say that. Once you're happy with that, do the same exact thing that we just did with that ear to the other ear, and it should look something like this. Look at that. Next step we're going to do, we are going to add our bow onto our headband. So just decide what side of the headband you want to see as your front. Um, funny enough, I actually choose the uglier side to be my front for where the bow will be facing because the bow does actually cover a good amount of it. Um, so what I'm doing here to attach the bow, very simple, we're gluing it down. You can go ahead and add a really thick short line of glue to the kind of like right in front of that center line there. I'm not putting it directly on the center line. I like my bow to kind of fall a little bit more in front. Uh, and then I line up the kind of like the knot that we had in the back with the center of the headband and I roll and press, slowly press and roll the bow onto the headband. And I'm going to hold that down, not letting up for a decent amount of time here. I do wanna take this time while I'm pressing and holding this down to just let you know, if you're working with variegated yarn or yarn that has like subtle like ombre or um, shifts in color or tones, um, kind of planning out where, what side you want the colors to rest on for your ear bases can be a little bit um, frustrating. <laughs> I've had to scrap a whole set of ears because I wasn't paying attention to that. Um, it is super easy to do the yarn wraps over your uh, ear strips if your hinges aren't exactly the same like in this video. So don't get discouraged. It's totally something that you can adjust as you go. And here I have it. It is secure. I probably held that down for at least 45 seconds. Um, and then if you did it correctly with the right amount of glue, you shouldn't see any seepage of glue on the front or the back. As it's hardening and cooling, you can totally wick away any extra glue. And there we have it. Let's move on to the very last part of this chapter, which is going to be our ends of our headbands, covering those up. Okay, last step here, we're going to cut two rectangular pieces out of our non-fraying fabric and uh, they will be two inches by one and a half inches. Go ahead and line up the one and a half inch sides with each other, folding in half hamburger style, not hot dog style, and make two cuts on that fold line a half an inch in from the edge, just like that. Perfect. You're going to open that up, and then from here, you are going to go ahead and cut two rectangle pieces out of those cuts. So only going in from that half inch cut mark up to the one and a half inch edge of the piece, you will cut off two rectangular pieces and now have a T. Next cuts we'll make is we are going to go ahead and cut off a long angled triangle from the side of the piece here and you are now left with what looks like to be a trapezoid with a rectangle on top or the hood of an oven shape <laughs> and do the same thing to the other piece we're making these cuts because it's I found it was a lot easier to pre-cut these pieces instead of trying to add them onto the headband with glue and then cut as I go that just was super cumbersome for me if you want to do the opposite of this add this to the piece and cut as you go that is up to you if you're feeling confident but this is what I felt to be the easiest way to make things symmetrical and if I pre-cut my rectangle pieces and my oven hood shapes out um, it just made it easier to batch my mouse ears so we have our T-shape. If you need to trim off any edges that uh, seem a little wonky, then cut off those long angled triangles from the other end, just like that. And here we have our two cutout pieces. Perfect. Look at that. Let's go ahead and add these to the headband now. And last step of this pattern here in this chapter, we are going to cover our ends here. Go ahead and take your glue and we are going to just add a short line of glue onto the outer center line of the tip of the headband and you're working all the way to the edge there, that glue. You can add a generous amount of glue here because you really wanna make sure that this isn't going to move once it's on. And then go ahead and line up the center of that newly cut piece onto that. You're gonna see me shift it because I actually did not line that up very well. And 
and then I kind of press it and hold it down a little bit and I start kind of folding those wings from the sides of that piece over just to kind of give myself an idea of uh, did I actually cut this right? Do I need to adjust it for the next set of ears that I make? And then go ahead and you're going to add glue onto the inside of that tab there. I don't add glue to the inside of the headband at this point because sometimes I overdo it and then I have too much glue on my hands. Press that down and kind of secure it onto the headband. And then from here, we are going to attach the wings onto the headband. Um, and you can see me kind of struggle <laughs> because I definitely still didn't center it well enough. Um, every time I do this on camera, it always kind of gets wonky, this first one, because it's definitely different when you film it as opposed to just sitting at your workstation and making these by yourself. Uh, but go ahead and add glue to the inside of that wing there. Press it down onto the headband. If you need to, kind of pinch and form this as you need. Um, I definitely would not sell this pair. I would just use them as a display pair for my market just because they are definitely not my up to my standard here. But you can see, you know, we are all humans here. You're gonna definitely probably make a couple of these to get started and get acclimated with the pattern. And then your third or second pair might be perfect and ready to sell. So just take your time to have some forgiveness with yourself because you know we're used to crocheting, we're used to seaming, we're used to selecting yarn, but when it comes to gluing, that's very different. Gluing is a different thing for us crocheters because we are fiber artists, we are not, I mean, most of us are just fiber artists. So when you get to adding special parts of crafting like gluing down, we can get a little bit uh, scared <laughs> of what we're about to do. Great, so once you're satisfied with that, you are going to repeat the same exact thing for the other end of the headband and you will have a beautiful brand new pair of mouse ears. Okay guys, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I am Nicole of Woven Tales Designs. I hope you enjoyed making up your own version of the Ever After Mouse Ears. If you're curious on great ways to customize your ears and inspiration, and you maybe have a yarn that you wanna try out but you're not sure how to see how to size it or to alter this pattern just a hair, I have a customization guide in my Etsy store that you can buy separate from the pattern. So if you don't wanna buy the pattern and you just wanna guide, I have a customization guide ready to go for you that's gonna give you tips on how to use the yarns that are different, how to work with child sizes, how to work with different coverings of the bottom of our headbands here. It's it's got a whole bunch of information. It gets you a little bit of the math as well. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and head down to my description box below where I have all of that linked. I also have all of the materials I have from today's video listed below as well. Have a creative day adding magic to your stitches in your own way and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye. Hello. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> if you hated this one, I guess I'll see you never. Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah guys. Have a magical day adding create. Oh, okay. All right, guys. We got you. We got you. I've never said that before. Yes, 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 yeah. Category five. Then come on down to pattern tail. Okay, okay, okay. Here or there. Why are we going on down? Where are we going down? Somewhere. Oh my god.